right, welcome back to Classics and Ancient Mediterranean Studies 1103 Classical Mythology. I'm Roger Travis, and let's downshift a little on the chess puzzles. Who can tell me what this chess position is called? Put it in the contest forum and enjoy the lecture. In this segment, I want to continue exploring the relationship between Odysseus and Penelope and what it has to do with the mythic themes of the Odyssey in relation to one specific concept, which is uh, something we can capture in a particular Greek word, homophrosune, which means like-mindedness. And we more or less have the same concept in English, and we also think of it as something that's important in what we think of as a romantic relationship. There's a danger of anachronism here that we have to try to avoid because it would be very easy for us to romanticize Odysseus and Penelope. And to some extent, that's because the Odyssey itself romanticizes them. But we are in danger of seeing the relationship between Odysseus and Penelope as some sort of ideal Greek marriage because real Greek marriage was not like that. And we have plenty of examples from elsewhere in the archaic literature to show that marriage for the archaic Greeks was a business relationship, if you want to put it that way, that uh, bride and groom did not know each other and that most of the time bride and groom and husband and wife went through their lives not really getting to know each other. At the same time, the Odyssey was one of the most important myths the Greeks had, and I think it would be fair to say that the Greeks thought that homo frisune was a, a rooty thing, a cultural truth value, something that you would like to have if you could get it, but not something that they would expect to find in every marriage, the way that we really do expect to find homo frisune like-mindedness in every good marriage in our world. As I was saying in the last segment, the substance of this homo frisune is the way that both Odysseus and Penelope weave their wiles, which is the phrase that's always used of Penelope. Penelope is beripron, which means circumspect, and Odysseus is polumetes, which means having a lot of cunning. And the word metes is one we're going to return to again and again. It's a word that means cunning intelligence, and it is, strangely enough, a quality that is almost always associated with women and not with men. As we'll learn later on in the course, it's the same word that gives us medea, the name of Medea, Jason's sometime wife, and also Andromeda, and also Medusa. All of those are related to this cunning intelligence that's associated with feminine qualities. So there is something that's a little bit strange about the like-mindedness between Odysseus and Penelope in this regard, but the Odyssey, as I say, uses it for its own mythic purposes. And the principal mythic idea there is that Odysseus is this different kind of tricksterish, cunning hero. And by doing that, he can have this special relationship with Penelope. 